everybody, it's username K and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a walk round vlog on Triumph's Speed Twin 1200. Now this specific model was launched in 2019 and in 2021 it underwent quite a few changes. Fast forward to 2023, there's not really been any significant changes from the 2021 update other than a few different colour options as usual. But if you'd like to hear more about this bike, the stats, the specs, what it's like for me to sit on this bike and push around, then keep watching and I'll play the intro. So, Triumph's Speed Twin 1200 is available from £11,795 and that is in this colour which is jet black. Now there are two other colour options that are available and they both start at £11,995. Now those two colour options are matte ironstone and matte storm grey and carnival red and storm grey. So for a little bit more money, you can pick up a fancy spandangly colour option. If we take a look at the engine on Triumph's Speed Twin 1200, we have a 1200cc parallel twin with a 270 degree crank. It produces 98.6 brake horsepower at 7,250 RPM and it produces 112 newton metres of torque at 4,250 RPM. If we move over and take a look at the dash, we have the twin analog style dash with the two LCD screens. We have very simplistic switch gear to accommodate that dash. On the switch gear on the left hand side, we have a nice big I button, which is for information. You can scroll through that and see things like the time, where the attraction controls on or off what the odometer is, what the trip one is, trip two, MPG, and then you're back to the time. If you look at the right LCD, it gives you your fuel range and also how many miles you've got until you need to fill up. And it also tells you what mode you're in. But you've got options of rain, road and sport. Now, none of these impact the power performance of the bike. They merely just influence how the throttle reacts. So in rain, you've got a real soft throttle. Street is as you'd expect. And sport is a bit more spicy. Of course, on the left hand side analog, you've got your miles an hour going across the top or around the dash should I say and then on the right hand side we have the rev counter. All in all a very simplistic, very easy to use uh, and most importantly easy to use on the fly as well. If we look at the front we've got this beautiful detail where it says speed twin on the handlebar clamps. We've got some adjustability in the levers and we do have a slipper clutch as well. The bike comes with bar and mirrors, which look great, but the bike does not come with cruise control, a quick shifter and auto blipper or heated grips. I don't think the quick shifter is something that can be specced up on this bike, so you're out of luck if you want one of those. So where this bike differs from the Thruxton RS, we have cast aluminium alloy wheels. We have a 160 rear, which is the same as the Thruxton, but we have Metzler Racetech RR rubber on this, which is quite a sporty rubber for the type of bike it is. Now, as I mentioned in 2021, suspension and brakes got an upgrade. So if we take a look at the front suspension, we have 43mm Mizoki upside down forks with cartridge damping and 120mm of travel. Then if we pan over to the rear, unfortunately no fancy Olin's shocks here, but we do have some generic twin shocks with adjustable preload and 120mm of rear wheel travel. Again, another upgrade for 2021 was the brakes. So at the front we have two Brembo M50 radially mounted four piston monoblock calipers. Now they sit on two 320 mil discs, which is a little bit beefier than on the Thruxton. And at the rear we have a Nissan two-part floating caliper on the rear. 
If we look at the fuel tank, we have 14.5 litres, which will get you an estimated and expected range of 130 to 140 miles to a tank. Obviously, this depends on how throttle happy you are. You guys know that as part of my walk rounds in these style of vlogs, I demonstrate what it is like to you guys for me as a five foot four individual with a 29 inch inside leg measurement or inseam. I demonstrate what it's like for me to sit on this bike. Now it has a seat height of 809 mil, which I would class as quite low and accessible. So we'll see what it's like for me to throw a leg over this bad boy. Okie dokie. So as you guys can see, I have the balls of my feet down on either side, which is quite nice. If I have a foot on the peg on the left hand side and I sit quite close to the tank because it does have quite a narrow waist, I find that I have a flat foot down which is very helpful when stopping and it's just great to have increased confidence if you're a little bit on the short side. But yeah, it is just wonderful. For example, today I've traveled here in rush hour. It was nose to nose traffic. Sometimes I wanted to weasel in and out and it was quite nice to just be able to, you know, full lock it, foot down and just get through really tight uh, gaps. So yeah, it's a great height for me personally. I really like it. Now, if I'm gonna sit on this, I can show you guys the ergonomics. So we've got a quite, nice bend in the leg it's not too extreme and we've got some tapered bars which put you quite upright and make you feel like you've got lots of leverage and control um, a much more practical riding position than its non-identical twin <laughs> the Thruxton RS I say that that's not entirely true because the Thruxton RS uh, is slightly more powerful blah blah but you know what you know what I'm saying it's basically a comfort version. It's as close to that as you'll get with flat bars and this whole arrangement. So yeah, lovely, accessible, a nice flat bench seat, which looks real nice. Quite a skinny waist, as I mentioned. And yeah, a pretty good seat height for me. Okay, we're going to push the Speed Twin 1200 around. It has a proclaimed wet weight of 216 kilograms. So we're going to see what it's like just to push it around. Oh, she's got squeaky steering. So I wouldn't say it's too bad to push around at all. It's not got the most agile turning circle I've ever experienced. But then again, that was the same with the Thruxton. But the rake is supposed to be a bit steeper on this than it was in 2019, thanks to that new uprated suspension. Not too bad to push around at all. Okay guys, now it's time for a little sound check. We've got a nice exhaust system. We've got one coming out at either end of the bike. What do you think? Let me know. Right guys and girls, that concludes my vlog, my walk round video on Triumph's Speed Twin 1200. What do you guys think of this bike? Do you like it? Does it tickle your pickle? Does it float your boat? I personally really like the concept of this bike. To me, it is a more practical comfy version of the Thruxton RS which if you guys watch my vlogs you'll know that I absolutely adored but yeah I think it's a cracking bike obviously I've ridden to get here and I can't wait to share with you guys my first impressions first ride impressions of this bike what I think about it
so yeah you've got that to look forward to if you're interested in that hit the subscribe button if you haven't already it massively helps my channel grow we've experienced some phenomenal growth on the channel so i just want to say welcome to all you newbies to the channel but yeah keep safe guys and i'll see you on the next one take care bye horse definitely doesn't like motorbikes because it was making some noises to ruin my shot. Of course it was. So the Triumph Speed Twin 1200 retails from... Stop spitting. Dry mouth of doom. How are you spitting? So Triumph Speed Twin 1200 is available in three different... <coughs> Try not to stutter. <coughs> available. Voice break. Oh yeah, 270.